Hi, my name is Kyle Jacobs, and I am an erotic artist uh, who paints a lot of comics. Uh, right now I'm working on an Alice in Wonderland graphic novel. Uh, it's wonderful. Uh, you can follow along with that project in my other class, but in this class we're going to go over how I paint kisses, because I think painting kisses is uh, a nice thing to do, and I think that you might like to do so as well. Kissing is an important part of an artist's vocabulary because the public has decided that kissing is one of the few forms of affection that can be displayed without any sort of censorship. This means that if you wanted to have a comic that was accessible to all ages, or if you wanted to paint an advertisement or a t-shirt design, um, a sticker design, um, a flyer, uh, any sort of public outreach um, type scenario which an artist would provide. Uh, if you do kissing, if you do hand holding, if you do um, cuddling, uh, there's just there's a spectrum of acceptability. And the thing that I find to be so interesting is that uh, every single human, a major a majority of the humans, uh, they all are sexual creatures. They all desire sex. They all want sex. And sex for them is a sort of, uh, it's like not only the cornerstone of all major sort of like uh, relationships, either directly or indirectly, um, but th they're also kind of like a source of like a lot of the motivations that we have, um, uh, who we want to be around, um, why we want to be around them, um, what sorts of future we'd like to have. It's embedded inside of our um, I mean, it, it is our reproductive, like, existence. Every person who ever existed has been the product of sex, uh, to some, again, most. However, our society is very uptight and, uh, prudish, and, um, I don't like it. Uh, however, um, when painting kisses, uh, I can paint something that's sexy and interesting, and I don't have to worry about anyone banning me when I post it online. I don't have to worry about getting kicked off of platforms like YouTube. I don't have to worry about anything uh, because I'm just painting someone kissing, because Clark Gable kisses, because, um, because teenagers kiss, because kissing is innocent. There's a lot of things that you can express through a kiss, and this is why it's so important to include in uh, the work that I do, because I make erotic graphic novels. So I can't just paint people having sex all the time, it wouldn't be interesting. There wouldn't be enough um, slow build-up tension. There wouldn't be uh, any kind of backstory to like what's happening between the characters. And there's a lot of things that you need to paint that are not explicit. Uh, in order to convey effectively an explicit scene. So um, this is why I decided to do a kissing tutorial, because I want to improve my kissing uh, art skills. And I thought that you would be interested in doing that as well. So that's why we're here. So the first thing that you're going to find as soon as you draw a kiss is that um, it looks like a heart. Uh, and a lot of people have come to this observation. All you need to do is type in Kiss Art Tutorial on Google, and you will see immediately just a lot of pictures of faces um, kissing each other that are shaped like a heart. And uh, this is kind of a cool guideline, and I certainly have done it myself. Here's a comic page that I've drawn previously for a project of mine in the past called Liberty or Death. And you can see very clearly uh, there is a heart, um, right? Like, and then these things, the hair on top, the hair on top, it looks like it's coming out. And then, so we kind of, what we have here is this, like, 
kind of setting up these planes. So there's the idea is that each of our faces, as you can see with my face, has these planes on them. So if I'm here, right, the planes that we're going to be drawing, right, this is kind of like a plane. And this right here, this is kind of like a plane. Right? And then there's um, this kind of, uh, this cheekbone, it sort of sets up, uh, you know, this, this definitive point in the uh, side of the face. Like, and, it, and these are the sorts of things that we want to keep in mind when we're drawing. So it's like, okay, I want a cheekbone, right? And, uh, and then um, the eyes, where are the eyes at in this heart? And they're going to be, you know, uh, something like that. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, so this, this right here, this is darker. This area is darker because um, it's coming out toward us. It, it's sort of like there's light that's coming down and it's hitting the top the top of this um, and then here I have a beard so it doesn't count but there is also kind of a prominent bone structure with the jawline and so you're, you're going to notice like if there's a prominent bone structure with the jawline there's probably going to be like a plane change there and that's how we get this very distinct shadow and light area, right? Uh, and the shadows also for these facial planes, they're going to be including uh, sort of depressions for where the eyes are, um, because that's how our eyes work. We have these spheres that are within some kind of bone structure some of us have different kinds of bone structure, but that's the basic idea. Like, this is a this is a structure that we're working with here, and so you got to kind of like think about how that structure is being moved by the impact with the other person's face, and like. I just you uh, you want to keep those little things in mind so you can try to make more of a, a three-dimensional shape. You can make a better image that way. So I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna live stream while I'm talking to you and we're gonna do these boxy lips right here and I'm just gonna paint and talk about what I'm trying to do while I'm trying to do it. So I guess what I want to really get to is this down here. I want to see what this is. If we have a uniform color, and we go make it more or less saturated, it says. But kind of like that. But then you've got kind of another different color. It's gonna be the skin tone. Mm. I love that right there. It looks like fat, and like the lips, they look plump. And so I'm going to try to capture some of that roundness there.
And this is kind of cool to me. What's happening here is it goes in like that, and that's where the other lip is. So, what we'll do is put that in there, and then use a even darker value right here at the point of contact, and probably even just want a one strong line. One, like you're inking in a comic book, if you can pull it off. Because you want to just show this, kind of just this cleft or place um, where the two are coming together, where they're meeting, and they form a little bit of uh, a shadow. I think it's called ambient occlusion. I want this other lip on top to be rounded as well. It looks more like a triangle to me. So I want the corner of the mouth, and then I suppose this is kind of like a triangle. And then it kind of, there's this indicator of a... Uh, no, that is a thing. But a, a smoother line, I think. I just want to paint the plane of the uh, the plane of uh, this thing, this piece of skin, this triangle shape, and so the light is hitting that uh, in this reference photo, and so I want more light. It's a bit too much. Mm -hmm. Why not? I kind of messed that up a bit, but it's okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's down and that changes. That's actually a little bit shallower. So sometimes I have to change my frame of thinking, like this is one of the exercises that they do when you're doing painting or drawing studies is uh, something along the lines of like draw the empty space and it's kind of like a, a challenge. Um, to switch how you're thinking about it. So and look at my face here, and you were trying to draw it, you might draw um, a circle and a box with a triangle where my nose is or something, right? Um, but if you were drawing the empty space around me, your eyes would have to be thinking about um, this rectangle, and this section right here, and this little inlet, and the where my hood is, and my shoulder, and then probably the negative spaces around my hair, and then on my profile, this would probably be really important. Like, this definition of lines, probably this rim light, or whatever, this thing behind me, like these definitive lines here would be really important um, because otherwise how would you know it was my profile and so you, you kind of like you're switching from between drawing what you think this looks like to more like what you think this looks like like we want to get this space and this thing so there's like this jagged bit right here and that's kind of what I'm talking about when I mean like switching up when you're thinking about, you know. So in this case right here, we have one person's lips and it's nice and full and I'm sure that they do go all the way over here, but not right now because uh, there's a chin there, do you know? Like you gotta, gotta get that chin in there because you, otherwise it's gonna be weird. 
why is that person's chin dis deformed? Well, it's because I was enamored with the lips of the other person. It's like, nope. Now, part of the thing that makes the kiss so interesting is that it's uh, this like really close um, expression of two people. You know, that's kind of a cool thing. So you don't want to miss. You don't want to. It's just it's hard. Drawing, drawing two people, drawing one person is hard enough. You can kind of get it after a while. Drawing two people, it requires your anatomy to be correct and your position to be correct in relation to the, the larger scheme of things. And it's a little bit more challenging. Um, yeah. This, uh, might as well just keep going. I, what you saw, what I did right there was some squiggle action. I'm a big fan of squiggle action. It helps me roughly place things. Uh, you know, you, you saw there, I just did a squiggle for a nose, and then I kind of zoomed in on it. I was like, what's really happening with that nose? And it turns out, what was really happening with that nose is there's sort of a plane that's happening up here on the on the top of the nose, right? And then you've got another plane that's happening down here. And so, you know, I want to designate the edges of those planes um, with the light change, right? And then go in here, and this kind of like swoops up. How does that go? Yeah, that's not bad. I want to get really dark inside of the nose, and even a little bit warmer, because I don't know why, but maybe that would be cool. Because it's there's blood up there, and like, body heat. I suppose that's another thing I should talk about right now while I'm doing this quick sketch. These lips on the bottom are looking pretty good. I'll flip it a little bit, and we'll even paint a little bit more. I'm gonna just, I'm, t I'm tired of them. You guys are out, getting rid of them. All right, so we're here. I'm gonna do some more, this, hard lines. Turns out you need some hard lines. Yeah. I got some of that, and some shade happening in there between noses. A little bit warmer though, because it's not the end of the nose. And then this thing is the noses. Where do the noses meet? At what point do the bodies touch? These are like these are the questions that everyone wants to know, and you, the artist, are going to be providing them with that answer. Yeah. I decided that I'm going to include this as sort of like a bonus video, because it would be cool if you were interested in hearing me ramble, and then I don't have to worry about editing it down, and you can just watch this at its regular speed, because I think that might actually be useful for you to hear my process while I'm doing it. So, yeah. So I'm just using um, just a random brush, charcoal pencil, and uh, I 
I think one one thing that I wanted to do earlier was I wanted to change the tone of this stuff. I kind of enjoy um, the fact that it's gray and green and weird, but um, I'm just gonna darken this. So I'm gonna look at our values for a second. And I'm not seeing a lot of light values in here. Um, in fact, um, my values are too light themselves. Um, so I'm just going to make a little area where none of that white on the outside can get in. So everything is kind of at least that dark. Hmm. Yeah. And then we'll just sort of So this is a blue, if I wanted it to be warmer, I would make it a darker blue. That almost looks more, more reddish. I want to get more boxy with it. I feel like I need more box in my life. What if I could only use straight lines? What would happen to this face if I could only use straight lines? Triangles. And then I want even more red. So I'm going to go all in on the purple. Purple red. Purple red is doing pretty good here. Uh, this right here is a speed paint where I also work from reference, but this is more just lines and uh, basic values. Like It looks like I have basically three values that I use the whole time. Uh, it's essentially a dark, a light, and a mid-tone. And I'm actually kind of in enamored with this um, painting right here. Uh, that you're watching me work on because I like how simple it is 
and I like how I could see this being the style for a comic and I could see it being reasonable to execute. I guess in this outro what I really wanted to do was just talk a bit about uh, the types of kisses or the sorts of things that one might also think about during kissing. Um, obviously you should just go out and kiss somebody. Uh, that should be part of your homework assignment. So you will remember what it's like, you know. Um, but also, uh, there are just so many different kinds. It's, re it's really important that when you paint your comic, you're thinking about things in terms of, like, the infinite subtleties of how humans interact with one another and about sort of like how characters develop in stories because the first thing that we tend to do tends to be kind of bland, but our first ideas are not always the best. Uh, sometimes we need more nuanced ideas in order to make things more interesting. You just think about fairy tales, you know? Like the kiss turns the, uh, the prince that was a frog into uh, a human, or uh, the kiss awakens the sleeping princess. Whatever the trope is, you know, there's a sort of, it's a, there's a, a catalyst. It's like a catalyst. Um, it, and also like Judas, think about Judas. Judas kisses Jesus on the cheek right before betraying him, you know? And so there's just, uh, are you sleeping beauty? Are you Judas? Uh, are you... Um, this, I remember like Norman Rockwell paintings of like little kids kissing each other, you know? This is a different thing. And, and also the true love kiss, this is, this is vastly different than, than all of those other kisses. You've got some like therapeutic kisses with the fairy tales, and then you've got some uh, mythological uh, betrayal kisses with Judas, and then you've got uh, these like Norman Rockwell paintings, and it's just cute kisses. Just little, little, little people expressing affection. And it's like pretty neat. Um, a kiss on the hand, a kiss on the cheek, uh, a kiss on the forehead, um, you know, uh, a kiss on the feet. Like what is the, um, what is the kiss that you're trying to make? What part of the story that you are working on right now, if you're working on a story, do you think would benefit most from a kiss? And what do you think that type of kiss ought to be? These are the sorts of things that I want you to think about. So when you paint your kiss, it's something more like you're trying to evoke something that's bigger than just, I wanted to paint a couple of people kissing. Because you, when you're able to convey depth like that, your overall story is going to be of a higher quality and uh, the message that you're sending is going to be more powerful and that's kind of the objective that we're working for here. Um, thank you so much for uh, taking care of this uh, KISS tutorial that you're working on and thanks for watching this course. Um, please, please consider uh, sharing your work below and please, uh, if there is other work that uh, you can see and you have something constructive to say or share with others, um, please share that and I will do my best to comment on the paintings that are submitted for projects. Uh, it was nice to spend a little half hour with you um, and thank you for watching this course.